Hey guys, what is up? Swim here. I wanted to record like a fairly quick thing because we just had this patch uh, the other day and it turns out because of this patch, well, knights are really good all of a sudden. There's a lot of people playing knights in a lot of different ways. There's four trolls, four knights, four trolls, six knights. There's dragons in knights with dragon knight pairing with the other dragons, but uh, predominantly even more so than that, you see a lot of people checking out like knights and mages is another thing that's very common with like four to six knights paired with mages using Puck as one of the mage and Dragon Knights as one of the knights to also complete dragons. So these are very strong builds right now and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about uh, how to effectively try to start thinking about how to counter them. So the first thing I want to talk about is the idea of pure damage. For those of you guys who didn't play Dota or the original Dota Auto Chess, um, pure damage is basically a form of damage that will go through any sort of damage reduction. It will go through armor and it will go through magic reduction. Now, contrary to popular belief, damage types do fully exist in Underlords. A lot of spells or skills have damage types of physical or pure. They just don't say that they do. So, for example, and we can kind of go through a list of pure damage sources, but basically the idea is anything that deals pure damage will deal damage in a way that doesn't get reduced by the armor uh, damage reduction, right? Which is really, really, really important in terms of countering knights. I'm just going to start with like the main one, uh, very, very important, Enigma. Enigma's Midnight Pulse deals pure damage. It's percentage based on the hero's HP, and this will go through magic or armor resist like anything including the knight's passive that's why this is really important so like rule number one if you want to counter knights when you end up in the late game you are either heads up against the knight player or it looks like you will be start stockpiling enigmas you want to get enigma level two i will say enigma level two is a really massive upgrade because not only does it go from five to seven percent per second so it goes from 50 percent to 70 percent over the course of 10 seconds which is a huge upgrade but it goes from a range of five by five or 25 cells to seven by seven or 49 cells it almost doubles in size this midnight pulse ability so getting an enigma level two like if there's one thing you're going to take away from this video if you want to counter knights get an enigma level two online for the late game so i've opened up developer mode here just to show you guys uh how retaliate works if you haven't seen it yet on any of my videos um but basically you want to i think and this is kind of how i've been using it have uh one of your nagas up in front uh that's going to be kind of tanking all the aggro um and effectively it'll be dealing a lot of pure damage to every opponent you face so let's uh let's see exactly how this works what you can see right now is like a fairly standard six warrior comp we've got six warrior undead pairing like pudge and necrophos troll uh with troll and witch doctor and witch doctor pairing warlock um so Let's, uh, of course, we've got like human and beast on top of all that. So it's a fairly tight comp. Let's see exactly how the um, Naga perk ends up working. Uh, let's have a look at this DPS chart as we enter the next round. So Slardar is just like up in front, ready to tank everything. Uh, and let's check out this chart. So Slardar just immediately right off the bat deals about 3000 damage to everything, um, which is pretty crazy because, huh, sorry, you shouldn't be seeing this right now. This is just dev mode bugging out. But um, basically, that's what Retaliate does. If it gets attacked by everything, it will immediately deal 250 pure damage to the entire team. Even a little bit more if you have something like a Blade Mail or a Vanguard. We could have put this Blade Mail on it. Again, this is just a, a test build to show you guys how to think about playing something like Retaliate. So I think a strategy like this, for example, this, this in particular can work pretty well. Even like Six Warrior with Naga paired. You can, you know, run a Medusa, Tidehunter, or Slark as your final unit if you're worried about mages. But either way, Retaliate with a Singleton Naga can do well against like a Knight's Troll variant, um, at least in terms of just trying to keep them at bay. Knights are very strong. I'm not saying you're immediately going to be beating every Knight player you see, but these are the kinds of things you're going to want to do uh, to try to, you know, help your odds against them in every fight. Enigma level 2, as you can see, is would be a great add-on to this build uh, for later, uh, replacing one of your Warlocks and just giving you this sweet, sweet level 2 Midnight Pulse. So I wanted to quickly breeze through the rest of the pure damage sources in the game. There's only a handful, so it'll be very fast. Uh, the Demon... Uh, alliance will deal pure damage on their attacks as long as you don't have multiple different named 
demons. Keep in mind, for new players, you can double up on the same demon. So if you have like two Queen of Pains or two Chaos Knights, you are not canceling demon. In fact, you're getting both of them. So that's pretty good. Uh, you are going to be able to do a lot against knights with these pure damage pokes. And keep in mind, you can even equip damage items or attack speed items on these to increase this amount of pure damage by even more. So uh, that's going to be a pretty good way to increase your burn damage against knights. There's a few units. Uh, Omni Knight, Purification, and Timber Saw's Whirling Death. These do pure damage as well. It doesn't mention that, but this will go through um, the kind of like uh, Knight Shield. So, might be a little bit of extra benefit from those. I should mention Pudge's Meat Hook is not pure. This is physical, uh, unlike how it was in Dota, at least when I played Dota. Um, and finally, we get to the items where we have Strange Bedfellows. Um, the Demon Hunter global perk. This actually deals pure damage. So I'm not sure if I would recommend building a full Strange Bedfellows build. To be honest though, I mean, it would be a good counter to Knights with all that demon pure damage plus all of this pure damage getting added to your Hunters. You will burn through those shields incredibly quickly. I might actually have to give this another chance. I was pretty dismissive of this going into it. I don't think this is a super strong build, but in a night meta, this could actually be a fairly viable anti-meta tech. What could maybe be a little more realistic of a way of trying to play this is maybe kind of splashing it non-committally. So like, for example, I think six elusive is a pretty decent build right now. And you could just pick this up for your level three anti-mage in that build because you're typically running one demon in there anyway, like Chaos Knight to pair with Luna or Queen of Pain to pair up with Assassins. So just running this just for a casual 30% pure damage on your level 3 AM is pretty sweet. And uh, you'll be burning through shields nicely. Two more globals, one being Tooth and Claw. Savage units will apply a stackable 10 damage per second bleed on attack. So this lasts for three seconds for each attack. And as it says, it's stackable. So it's basically 30 pure damage per each Savage unit per attack over the course of three seconds for each attack. So that's pretty good. You're going to be able to burn through a lot of shields if you're on something like a six beast board. I'll have to try this out, uh, but it will actually be able to do pretty well against knights, all things considered. And, you, you know, you're going to be like in warriors at that point. Um, beasts are usually looking for something to pair with warlock, right? You've got like a venomancer as one of your beasts. And of course, the plague wards that venomancer summons are also beasts. So, you know, you're going to have that empty Warlock slot with that, that you can uh, build up with Enigma as your second Warlock on top of that. Six Savage, get Enigma later is a really, really good board if you have Tooth and Claw against Knights. Um, and finally, my personal favorite, Retaliate. Uh, units attack and scaled units take 80 damage per second for three seconds. Now this one doesn't stack um, like the Bleed does, but it's a ton of damage. It's 240 damage for each unit on your opponent's side of the team. Uh, and of course, you can pair this with a second scaled unit to counter mages. And knights mages might end up being kind of the most popular way to play knights right now. Something like four or six knights with uh, something like three mages, just like Puck, Keeper of the Light, and Crystal Maiden or something like that. Looks pretty good. So Retaliate will be able to crush that with its... 240 pure damage, especially if you get like multiple retaliates. So I'll show you guys, uh, give me one second, I'll show you how to actually use this, how you want to position this against knights uh, to best gain the effect out of it. And the final thing I want to talk about is how you want to position versus knights. Uh, I'm just going to show you with like random pieces, uh, so you'll just kind of have to use a little bit of imagination here. But typically at higher levels and underlords, you will see people doing basically like a kind of clumping or boxing strategy where they'll try to protect their like squishy ranged heroes. Again, these are kind of like semi-random units. And again, this, this shouldn't be happening. Um, but uh, formations like this, except without all the random units, are kind of what you see. Like you see like an aura carrier in the middle. You see like the squishy ranged DPS you want to protect like on the side, not inside of Assassin's Ranges. So you see people clumping and knights are definitely one of the comps that wants to do this with like protecting, you know, their exterior with knights. Um, and they're not really vulnerable to AOE in general um, because they're so tanky and they don't even really mind getting stunned, like stunned down. So knights will often clump up. Most good comps you're playing will be clumping up. 
And basically, the first thing you really want to keep in mind is that um, the position on your opponent's board matters. So, for example, when you're looking at opponent's boards, you can click this button to see where your board will look like against theirs, um, which is a really, really useful positioning tool. This button is available in, like, any normal game. But basically, you want to make sure, first of all, that you're not in front of their humans with any of your silenceables, right? If you have a hero like Enigma would be the number one thing. If they're smart, they're going to try to put one of their humans in front of you. Dragon Knight and Omni Knight have the ability to silence you as well as any other human if they attack you. So keep your Enigma and any other important casters outside of like where that human will attack. You do not want them in front of them. But the other very important thing about knights is a large part of what carries knights is Dragon Knight, especially Dragon Knight level 2. Dragon Knight level 2 is fundamentally very different from level 1 because his breath gains a big AoE uh, damage attack, right? So if there's a knight player who's going off, it's usually because they have a Dragon Knight level 2. It's a very powerful hero right now, you know, paired with a dragon. And basically, how this is going to work is it's an AoE cleave. So let's say it was attacking this drow right here. It would splash to everything in this one cell area, which is insane DPS if you're clumped up. So what you're going to want to do against dragons or knights, knights, dragons in like a heads up scenario is you're going to want to make sure your board is diagonally across from your opponent's board, which is to say if you click if, if <clears throat> sorry, if you're clicking through the side here and you see them on the left side on your screen, you're going to want to be on the left side on your screen because the left side on your screen means they'll be over here when they're facing you on your board and you want to be diagonally across from them, right? It's very important because if you're vertically across from them, both units, both formations will kind of just stay together and you'll both attack each other. And the Dragon Knight benefits from that a lot more than you do because the AoE splash will destroy you okay so make sure your corner comp if you see that you want to do like a flip you basically want to invert your board as late as you can against that something like this and basically you want it diagonal from your opponent so that the units will kind of spread apart you'll see like during a fight like anti mage will go over here these clockworks will go over here these units will walk this way and everything kind of splits apart um and that's better for you their board will be spread not spread enough to dodge the huge aoe of something like enigma's midnight pulse but yours will be just spread enough to dodge the tiny AoE, but very, very powerful AoE that is Dragon Knight's Dragon Breath. Okay, so that's it. Um, these are all the kind of like immediate tips I have for you guys against Knights. I'm not going to lie. This won't immediately make all Knight players lose to you. But uh, as Knights are very powerful right now, if you don't necessarily want to play them yourself, or if you do, I mean, you can still run like Enigma in Night Mirror, you know? I mean, this is still going to be useful. And basically, just for the next, like, you know, while while we're dealing with our knight overlords, hopefully these will help you have a bit better of a time against them. Anyway, that's uh, that's it. I will um, see you guys. See you guys next time. I never know how to end these things. Uh, bye.